How's everybody doing? So welcome uh, to the 2012 Silicon Prairie News Awards. Yes. It's amazing to see so many folks here. Uh, in this, this event really is a testament to why we started uh, back in July of 2008. It's, it's amazing to see this room virtually full. Uh, the events that we do, Think Iowa, Big Omaha, uh, and the work that you guys do each and every day. This is what it's really about. So we're excited for this event tonight because it really shines a light on the people that are building the businesses. Uh, the investors that are involved, the service providers, uh, the whole nine yards, the people behind uh, the community. So when folks look into what we're doing, uh, they can see again, tonight's all about you. So again, thank you for being here. Uh, we're excited. We've got a crazy, fun, filled night planned, maybe some surprises. So with that, Jeff, Wood, take away. Absolutely. And thanks. For those that don't know, this is Jeff Slobotsky. I think most people know you, Jeff, but thank in case you. anybody's watching on live stream or here tonight that doesn't know, Jeff here, one of the founders. I'm Jeff Wood. I work in Des Moines on the business side of the company quite a bit. And with that business side, we talk to sponsors, and it's sponsors that make these things possible. So I want to thank them right now, um, especially Bellevue University, who sponsored the opening reception that everybody just enjoyed. Thank you, Bellevue. I also want to thank Huddle, who's sponsoring the closing reception after this is done. So thank you, Huddle. And then a great group of other businesses, both here in Omaha and the Silicon Prairie and around the country that helped with this. Light Bank, Centennial Bank, West Corporation, Coley Jessen, the Greater Omaha Chamber of Commerce, Verizon Wireless, and the University of Nebraska. Thank you all. Hi everybody, I'm Dusty, uh, also co-founder, Silicon Prairie News. And uh, before I, I'm gonna go off script a little bit because I heard Somebody mentioned, what is an analog? Uh, so for those of you who don't know, this is our beloved mascot, Analog the Prairie Dog. And so tonight, yeah, clap for Analog, for sure. And you know, you might see more from him later or hear, who knows, right? Like, uh, he is our mascot. Uh, we love him dearly. And in fact, the trophies that we have here are uh, lovingly called Analogs, the Analogs, right? So. Um, a couple of other uh, items. Uh, big round of applause for the Startup Alley that was out here. I hope everybody got a chance to talk to the folks that are out there. Great group of startups that were, uh, you know, set up their booth and really sort of explained what's going on. A good showcase of, what, uh, of, of, of some of the great companies that are sort of up and coming on the Silicon Prairie. Um, Danny and Michael are going to come up in a minute and talk more about the selection committee. Uh, but I think many of the people in this room were involved in the voting process, and then uh, a lot of the 16 members of the selection committee were here as well. And uh, a huge, huge thank you to all of them. I mean, like Jeff said, this is a community event. This is a celebration. This is, uh, this is not us picking the winners. It's the community really voting on and selecting uh, who really represents the Silicon Prairie. And I want to... Uh, I don't want to do this every time tonight, or else it'll be like the, the you know the State of the Union. But uh, we have a, a, a tradition at Big Omaha and Think Iowa, uh, whereby we welcome people on the stage uh, as they take the stage with a rousing applause and standing O. Uh, so, with that, a big welcome and Big Omaha, Think Iowa welcome to Danny Schreiber and Michael Sosa. Big Omaha here. Thanks for the welcome, everyone. Uh, as Dusty mentioned, I am Michael Stacy, and I am the editor of Silicon Prairie News. Uh, and my name is Danny Schreiber. I'm the managing editor of Silicon Prairie News. Uh, Michael and I make up the full-time editorial team at SPN, so we're the two guys who oversee those stories that you read every day. And, and Danny, looking out over this audience, room full of geeks and, and tech enthusiasts, uh, and everyone's eager with the anticipation. I can't put my finger on it, but there's something familiar about this scene. Yeah? What, what are you thinking? Where is it? What is it? I guess uh, some sort of an announcement, tech announcement. 
Oh, God. Yeah, that's it. And uh, folks, I regret to inform you that tonight there will be no iPhone 5 announcement. We're very sorry. Those of you who came here expecting that, you can refund your tickets at the door and make your way home. Sorry. Whoa. Ah, hey, no one said no to the door, Michael. No. <laughs> neither, neither the bad joke nor the iPhone announcement made people leave. That's good. <laughs> good. Anyway, uh, we are excited to have everyone here. We've got a packed house. And we're excited because the people here are the people who, on a day-to-day -day basis, makes th make things happen in this region. Over the past year at SPN, we've covered a lot of launches, a lot of anniversaries, a lot of milestones. We've covered companies making acquisitions and companies making exits. We've covered companies raising capital, and we've covered inc incubators launching. I mean, all in all, we've covered a lot, and that's the 48 finalists here and everyone else in this room and everyone watching at home that's kind of made those things happen. And some will say that people in the Midwest are too humble for their own good. They don't want to strut their stuff. They don't want to flaunt what they're doing. And there may be some truth to that, but tonight you guys have no choice. We're here to celebrate. We're here to applaud our accomplishments. And so with that in mind, I'd ask that everyone just give ourselves, everyone in the, in the room, a collective round of applause. There you go. No modesty tonight. It's a celebration. And really, tonight's event is the culmination of a two-month process that included a public nomination period, a public vote, input from a 16-member selection committee, which we felt was a group that represented a cross-section of the region's startup ecosystem. They were anybody from C-level executives, community organizers, economic development officials, and educators. But you know, no matter where they were, I think they shared one thing in common. And that was, it was a tough time picking the finalists and ultimately the winner. And for this, I can tell you firsthand, one of our, one of our committee members, Steve D, the CTO at Hayden, you know, said this. When I was asked, I thought this would be easy. Just review a few technologists, designers, and companies, and we're done. It wasn't like that at all. I was exposed to dozens of new thinkers and innovative companies. It was very inspiring. Well, Steve, it was equally inspiring for us at SPN as well. And it's been wonderful to see the community's response to these awards. Now, we'd like to introduce that selection committee we've been talking about. Uh, if you are present in the room, briefly stand and recognize so we can say hello. But let's hold the applause because there's 16 of them and they, we want to mention where they're from. So let's hold the applause, big applause until the end. Michael, go ahead. Starting uh, from the upper left. Okay, among our esteemed judges, we have Tom Boozer from the Institute of Entrepreneurship and Innovation at UMKC's Block School. We have Jay Byers from the Greater Des Moines Partnership, uh, Adam Coombs from Salt and One Week KC, and the aforementioned Steve D from Hayneedle. Also, have Judy Isles from the Iowa State Papa John Center for Entrepreneurship, Joan Gable from the Trilusky College of Business at the University of Missouri, Dr. David Keck from the Rake School of Computer Science and Management at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and Andrew Kerbalani from Insighton. Can't see anybody standing, but you can see these guys out here, so. See at least a couple. <laughs> uh, also, and Maria, I know you're here, I talked to you briefly, Maria Myers from US SourceLink and KC SourceLink, uh, Chuck Norris of Nelnet, John Robinson, who's uh, rocking his startup suave pretty hard tonight from the Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation, and Lynn Hicks from the Des Moines Register. John actually tied my bow tie. Thank you, John. <laughs> and we also have Shane Reeser of Cohort, Dusty Reynolds of the Greater Omaha Chamber of Commerce, our very own Jeff Slobotsky, and Brian Walder from the state of Iowa. Give these round of applause, here they are. Thank you very much. No more emails from me, no more pestering, uh, but uh, we really appreciate the, the amount of time you've put in. Spreadsheets and spreadsheets and blog posts that we've sent their way, these, this team spent quite a bit of time to find out who would be the best to award these awards to. We want to bring a little perspective to this process as well. This was something that first opened in June with public nominations. Then in July, we asked the judges to, shift, to, to shift, sift through more than 350 nominations they're in each category, not only four finalists. In August, the public voted on these finalists. You racked up a total of more than 10,000 votes. And now today, we're here to name 
the winners of the 12 categories. Yes, exactly. And we'll get to those winners in one minute, but just a few more thoughts. Uh, when we announced the finalists, we reached out to them and asked to, to give us a word about their fellow contributors. And uh, we got a lot of positive responses, and we'd like to share a few of those to just provide a little bit of perspective, uh, those 48 finalists kind of sounding off on one another, if you will. Some of these nominees are old friends, and others might be meeting for the first time. But all, it seems, are aware of the work that's being done by their fellow nominees. You know, whether it's in meetups, you talk about it at conferences, or just over the phone or email. And they share an appreciation for that. We reached out to Nick Bowden, the CEO of Mind Mixer. Uh, I don't believe Nick is here tonight, but uh, he calls the other Startup of the Year nominees amazing. And he said, quote, the other Startup of the Year companies are literally changing industries, altering the way people do business, and in many cases, making the world a better place. So some powerful stuff going on. I reached out to Kirk Hazenthal of Rarewire. He's the CEO and co-founder. He's another Startup of the Year nominee, and he echoed that sentiment. The group of companies we are nominated with are all badass. They are, <laughs> that's, that's what he said. <laughs> they, are rep they all represent the Silicon Prairie at the highest level, and we are truly proud to be associated with them. Jesse Bishop, who's the founder of Clink Mobile and is on hand tonight, uh, sounded off on the other new startup nominees, or new startup of the year, rather, nominees. She said, Front Flip, Sporting Innovations, and Goodsmiths all embody the spirit of innovation and sterling ethics that set successful technology startups apart from the rest. This group make me proud to count Clink a member of the newest generation of Midwest startups. And I think we all echo that sentiment. We're all proud of the, the companies represented here this evening. And lastly, Thad Langford, who's the finalist for the Community Champion Award, shared this. The common, the common traits amongst this group are a real passion for helping others, belief in what can be done in the Silicon Prairie, and the resilience to getting things done. These folks have forged the path to making our, our region a place of choice for entrepreneurs, and I'm grateful to work alongside with them in doing so. Now we could probably ramble on about this forever. There are a lot of accolades and a lot that we'd like to say about these companies, but let's let the companies do a little talking themselves and get down to the awards. Uh, and so, without further ado, we'll bring on our presenters for the first award of the evening. We have Tom Chapman of Nebraska Global and Jamie Thomason of Div Divi HQ to present. Let's give them a warm Silicon Prairie welcome. for me, for, for you too. <laughs> Whether they were working to improve online payments, customer engagement, web browsing, or homework tracking, these finalists all earned high marks for their efforts on the mobile front, and here they are. Dwala. Send or request money on the Dwala Payments Network. This past year, the company added features proxy and spots, which show nearby users and merchants, respectively. Front flip. Scan QR codes at participating merchants for a chance at instant or future discounts or prizes. Users learn of the discount by rubbing a digital scratch off like a lottery scratch ticket. Leap 2. A new take on mobile search. Users leap to search results instead of scrolling through a list. The app features direct to web results showing users a website preview. And my homework. Students keep track of their homework, classes, and projects, and an in-app purchase allows users to activate push notifications and sync their data with an online interface. And the analog goes to, sorry. Front flip.
accepting the award on behalf of Front Flip is Matt Beckner, the startup's founder and chief product officer. First of all, this is awesome. I would also like this one too. <laughs> uh, this has been definitely a ride. I think everybody else who's nominated knows the crowded space that is mobile. And I definitely want to thank our amazing development team for um, you know pretty incredible product. Being the guy who had the idea in the head to have people around you who can take an idea and make it real. Uh, a couple of the guys who helped me design this product are here with me today. and It's pretty special and that's what being an entrepreneur is about is you know, creating something with other people and enjoying it. So thanks for the award. It means a lot. Thanks Silicon Prairie. This is awesome. I love what you guys are doing. Um, go Midwest and go analog. <laughs> Now to present the award for Startup Technologist of the Year is Scott McCormick of Social Money and Tej Dewan of Startup City, Des Moines. It truly is what it feels like. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, this award recognizes a startup team member that made a significant contribution toward development of a startup's product. The finalists are? Our, our first finalist is Matt Angel, co-founder and CTO of Rare Wire. Angel's co-founder, Kirk Hazenzal, describes him as a unique combination of one of the most talented programmers and software designers in the country with absolutely no ego. Next, Ben Metz, lead product engineer of emerging product lines at Bano. The startup CEO, Wade Arnold, said Ben has created a culture of continued learning, peer mentoring, and product execution from no employees on his team to more than 40. And I've worked, with, uh, worked alongside a whole bunch of them <laughs> in uh, just under uh, 24 months. Our next finalist is Rodrigo Neri co-founder and developer of Instant, the maker of My Homework app. In May, Instant co-founder Keith Enzeroth said Rigo left his lead web developer position at Cerner to work full-time on education-related products for his startup, Instant, where he's already launched a new website for teachers called teachers.io. Next up, Brandon Weber, software engineer at Douala. The startup CEO, Ben Mill, describes Weber as having an amazing passion and care for technology that's been evident since he joined Dwala's engineering team when it was three people. <laughs> <laughs> Ted loves you too. And the analog goes to Brandon Weber. say. Um, I was actually shocked to even get nominated because there's just such an amazing amount of talent in this community. So I was just kind of like looking, I'm like, man, like I know guys like Levi Rosso at like Goodsmiths who's just, you know, the stuff that they're creating and the team that he's working with and some of the other developers I have the privilege to work with. Um, I know all the people at like Startup City Des Moines. I see all the stuff on Silicon Prairie News, just like all the announcements and stuff. It just blows my mind that I'd even get nominated, much less win this. Um, so, I mean, huge applause to you guys. I'm, um, so, I'm really stoked to be up here. Um, definitely want to thank my team, like Ben Mellon, who even gave me the chance to even come work for Dwala, was a um, huge opportunity for me. And I just came in and was like, hey, I just want to prove that I can even, you know, go 
hang out with him, you know? Um, <laughs> and, but I, I need to thank my wife most of all. Um, she's my, you know, uh, she's, she's my rock, she's my foundation. Um, she keeps me sane, keeps me level, lets me know when I'm going a little too far crazy, you know, with work and stuff. And so, yeah, I guess just thanks again. So, that's it. <laughs> now to present the award for Startup Designer of the Year is Julie Malik of Bloom and Blake Lawrence of Herdat. recognizes a startup team member that made a mark on a startup's product by providing an amazing user experience or beautiful design. Here are the finalists. Jake Johnson, co-founder and designer at, of DivShot. The startup's co-founder, Michael Blay, said Jake does more than provide user experience design. He has a major impact on every aspect of DivShot's product, brand, and image. Justin Kermerling. Designer for MindMixer. The startup CEO, Nick Bowden, said Justin's understanding and interest in making a world a better place manifests itself in MindMixer's design philosophy, and then he has a knack for taking the complex and making it simple and easy to use. Rachel McClung, design lead at Goodsmiths. The startup CEO, James Elison, said Rachel's ability to see the big picture is what places her at the top and that's she's constantly thinking about what a small change in design will do to the overall experience of a good Smith's shop owner. <laughs> Kyle Murphy, VP of User Experience at Huddle. The startup CEO, David Graff, said Kyle's ability to listen to coaches that Huddle uses, understand their real problems, and translate what he learned into well-designed solutions has been key to the startup's growth over the past few years. You hold the analog there. Good looking guy. Julie grabbed his butt. You can grab his butt. <laughs> nice and firm butt for analog there. Nice work. Sorry, Julie. I'm just saying. I, I didn't it. know that was his you guys butt. You can't see that. Oh. Um, <laughs> Startup Designer of the Year. The analog goes to Jake Johnson, co founder and designer of Div Shop. But this is Jake. <laughs> He's looking down. Um, so something that happened with DivShot over the last few weeks, they were accepted into an accelerator in LA. And so they're in LA. Um, and so Jake, uh, we asked finalists, uh, just a blanket ask, any finalist that wasn't able to come in to send a, um, just in case, an acceptance speech. So he'll say this is just in case here. Um, but we're going to go ahead and play it. So if I get the mic up here and we'll see. Hi, this is Jake with this shot. I just want to say I'm sorry I couldn't make it to the award ceremony. Michael and I recently moved out to Santa Monica enjoying Launchpad LA. If in the event I do win Startup Designer of the Year, I'd like to thank Kansas City Startup Weekend for all their support and help. Div Shop probably wouldn't have happened without their involvement, and I wouldn't be sitting here hypothetically accepting an award. <laughs> we already miss Kansas City, can't wait to get all of you into the beta. Thank you for this honor. It really means a lot, and I'm proud to say I'm a Silicon Prairie designer. I don't have much time, so I'm already back to working on Div Shot. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, actually, let's yeah, go ahead, Blake. What do you think? <laughs> we did. I'm not worried about it. Thanks, Blake. We'll pick that up for you out there. Oh. <laughs> 
Now to present the award for Startup Service Provider of the Year is Brian Kaiser and John Wirtz of Huddle, one of tonight's premier sponsors. This award recognizes an attorney, accountant, marketer, or other service provider who made things happen for startups. It's that simple. And the finalists are? Bart Dillashaw, Scudder Law Firm. Client Ben Pankinen of Social Assurance said that Bart breaks the mold of a typical attorney and that he possesses an expertise in startups, funding models, and accelerated growth. Joey Henke of Miller, Fiddler, and Henke Insurance Agency. Client Dan Shipton of BitMethod said that having a partner to help them navigate the insurance industry has allowed them to focus on their business. Greg Cradifil of Pulsinelli Sugarheart PC. Client Nathan Jones of Ag Local said Greg was instrumental for his startup by providing early counsel and model fit for his cash-strapped pre-revenue startup that allowed them to get going quickly. And David Milligan of Avon IP. Client Colin Kenevy of Greenbean said David truly gets it when it comes to running a startup, from the way he goes out of his way to help you, to the system he's implemented, to billing for his clients. And the analog goes to... Greg Cradifil. Uh, thank you. Wow, I uh, totally did not expect this. Um, I guess I'd like to start like everything else I've ever seen of these is I'd like to thank God, my family, Harvey Weinstein, the Academy. Um, no, I mean, I, look, I love working with technology entrepreneurs. Quite frankly, they inspire me. I mean, technology entrepreneurs to a one, envision the world as a better place. I mean, they make it more efficient. They, they envision it faster. They envision it more entertaining. They envision it more secure. I mean, they, uh, I mean, a technology entrepreneur puts their time, their talents, their resources on the line every single day. And I feel very honored to have the opportunity to help them and work with them. And so I'm very appreciative of this. Thank you very much. Now to present the award for Investor of the Year is Meg Fitz of the Greater Des Moines Partnership and Jonathan Robinson of the Ewing Marion Coffin Foundation. Unlike some of the other presenters, I'm going to do my best not to molest poor analog here. <clears throat> These investors, uh, according to the CEOs of their portfolio companies, do more than just boost bank accounts. They provide the total package. Here are the finalists. Dundee Venture Capital, a venture capital firm investing in internet services and e-commerce business. Nick Bowden of Dundee portfolio company MindMixer has said that Mark Haysbrook has provided connectedness to both coasts, invaluable guidance, and served as a sounding board as someone who has created a successful company. Jim and Karen Linder, a husband-wife angel investor duo. Paul Jarrett of Bulu Box said the Linders are one of the main reasons he moved Bulu Box from San Francisco to Lincoln. They didn't just contribute dollars, Paul said. They have contributed their time, mentorship, and contacts. Nebraska Global, a software venture firm, that, excuse me, a software venture fund that invests in Nebraska-based startups. Christopher Kingsley of the fund's portfolio company, 42, has said that Nebraska Global is all about their people showing up for their companies, 
We have seen how Steve Keen, Patrick Smith, and Nebraska Global Investor Stephen George will really go out of their way to help you solve problems and connect people. Open Air Equity Partners, a venture capital and private equity firm focused on the wireless communications and mobile internet sectors. Thad Langford, former president and CEO of open air portfolio company Zave Networks, which was acquired by Google, said open air was a critical piece of the equation for his former company's success. They were believers in the business and thus willing to go well above and beyond the traditional VC role, Thad said. And the analog goes to Dundee Venture Capital. Accepting the award for Dundee Venture Capital is Mark Haysbrook, Michael Weta, Nick Ingebart, Shannon Bollet, and Andrea Sandell. So uh, this is the first team acceptance here because uh, I don't do um, half as much as the people behind me. And so I guess I wanted them to be recognized as well because this is a really a first crack team that we have and I'm really proud of them. So thank you very much for that. Uh, as the oldest guy in this room, um, <laughs> I was trying to think, should I use words like stoked and uh, just, it didn't come off very well. But, um, you know, to be in the same company with, uh, you know, with the lenders, Nebraska Global, Open Air, uh, I think the fact that my eight kids hit the vote button uh, repeatedly <laughs> might have tipped the scales here because when it comes down to it, we're all doing great things. Uh, we all have the same mission and uh, the fact that we get to work with really great entrepreneurs is, uh, is part of the fun. And as I enter the last lap of, of my career, I thank uh, the entrepreneurs out here that I guess get to be exposed to every day. And, and the energy and enthusiasm that you bring to me uh, really is something that I will cherish and appreciate and thank you for this recognition because it really means a lot to me and my team. Thank you. Now to present the award for Executive of the Year is Lynn Hicks of the Des Moines Register and Joni Cobb of Pipeline. This group of finalists is four CEOs who pushed their startups to new heights over the last year, helping their companies achieve milestones that included funding, acquisitions, and user growth. The finalists are... Chris Caldwell, co-founder and CEO of LockPath. Chris led LockPath to quadruple revenues, make key hires, and release a second version of its flagship product, LockPath. I'm sorry. LockPath co-founder Chris Goodwin said that because of his co-founder's attitude, perseverance, and leadership, LockPath always finds a way around, over, or through any obstacle in its path. David Graff, co-founder and CEO of Huddle. David led Huddle to acquire its top two competitors in the high school football market and saw his company expand its roster to include NHL and NBA teams. Huddle co-founder John Wirtz said David keeps their startup hungry to impact more coaches and athletes than any software company ever has, keeping employees laser focused on a common vision, help coaches win. Nathan Jones, founder and CEO of Ag Local. Nathan led his startup to participation in a San Francisco incubator, and in June, he closed the startup's $1 million seed round. Ag Local co-founder Jacob McDaniel shared a quote of Nathan's, fear is a wonderful emotion to feed work and innovation. 
Jacob said, I have never seen someone so scared and at his best at the same time as Nathan. <laughs> ben Milne is the founder and CEO of Dwalla. Ben led Dwalla to releasing three features and products, surpassing 100,000 users, and in February, closing the startup's $5 million Series B round. Dwalla COO Sharice Flynn said Ben's mind fires and executes at such efficiency, depth, and creativity that it challenges everyone around him to question their own limits, a characteristic that's embedded itself into Dwalla's culture, team, and product. And the analog goes to... Go ahead. Ben Milne. <laughs> Ben was sitting right in the middle. <laughs> so I kind of wish I could take a saw to this thing and cut it in multiple pieces. Um, because, I mean, the other people that are growing companies that are on this screen are doing amazingly meaningful things that when I read Silicon Company News, that's who I'm reading about. And I think that Dwal is very early and we have a lot of work to do and I'm honored um, to have this and I just am really honored to be mentioned with these guys um, and Sharice, holy shit, like thank you. Um, even though I supposedly have this title of CEO, I can't even really dress myself. I'm wearing Danny's belt right now because I didn't have one when I left town and I changed in the bus on the way here. Um, I work for a living and I'm going to continue doing that here in the prairie and I appreciate the opportunity to allow me to do it. So a lot of people in the room have done a lot of really amazing things for me and just thank you. It means a lot. Well, folks, that's half of our award, six down, six to go. Before we go to the next six, we wanted to hear from our special guest tonight, uh, David Cohen, the founder and CEO of Techstars. I'm going to hand it over to my uh, colleague, Jeff Slobotsky, to introduce David. Hello, we're excited to uh, welcome David Cohen from uh, Boulder uh, to Omaha. Read David's bio, give a little background. For those of you who are not familiar, uh, David Cohn is the founder and CEO of Techstars, which is a Boulder-based, mentorship-driven, seed stage investment program for internet startups. Previously, David was the founder of several software and web technology companies, both Pinpoint as well as Earfeeder, which were later acquired. David is an active startup advocate, advisor, board member, and technology advisor who regularly comments on his blog, which if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to check it out, davidgcohn.com. He also runs the Colorado chapter of the Open Angel Forum and is the New York Times bestseller author with Brad Feld of Do More Faster. Uh, but really, I want to say it's, it's the work that David's accomplished over the last handful of years, uh, along with Brad and that community in Boulder that really resonates with myself and the entire team at Silicon Prairie News, uh, continues to push us uh, forward in terms of what we're trying to do here in the region. So uh, raising visibility with not only our startups here locally, but nationally. So. With that, let's give a big uh, Silicon Prairie News welcome to David Cohn. What's up, guys? You having fun? Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. Uh, two things to say thanks for. Um, you know, it's not every day that you get a standing ovation, so that's pretty cool. And second, I got like 
450 extra steps on my Fitbit from that. So that is going to look good tomorrow. Thank you very much. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, I am an angel investor. That's the part where you say, hi, David. You're an angel investor. I know, guilty. Uh, I have about 240 startups I'm an investor in. So uh, Dave McClure, look out with that 500 thing. You have to raise the bar. Um, a lot of them around Boulder, but I invest all over the country. And uh, I'm also really passionate about startup communities. So when Jeff and the guys asked me to come hang here and learn more about this community, I was psyched to do that. Um, we had a great uh, get together with, with some folks that I'm sure are here, about 15 folks earlier today at, at Dundee. Um, and uh, I got to learn a little bit about the different cities in the community and how all that plays together. So that was really fun. Um, by the way, Mark, uh, congrats on that award. You are awesome. Um, we have good times. I actually saw him just yesterday in Chicago uh, at Accelerate, and uh, he's a great rep for this area. So uh, congrats, Mark. Um, you know, I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Techstar so you know what it is. It's a mentorship-driven startup accelerator. That means we take uh, hundreds of the best mentors, we think the top 1% of uh, internet software entrepreneurs and investors, and we intensely focus them on our companies for three months. We started doing that in Boulder, um, which is a town of only 100,000 people. And Techstars has really grown up. Um, lots of crazy stuff has happened. We're now in New York and Boston. We have an operation in Texas. Uh, we're in Seattle as well. So we're in five places. And we funded about 160 companies now. Uh, we've raised somewhere around a quarter billion bucks. So it's, it's been awesome to watch that energy in those communities. And, and I've, I've learned a lot from working on so many startups at the early stage. So I want to share some of what I learned. Um, I think uh, we open source Techstars uh, in the beginning of 2011 uh, as part of Startup America. We basically said, here's the blueprint, go do it. And we've since seen so many communities sort of take that model and implement it in their own community. And it's just really awesome to see the explosion in programs that are out there. And of course, they won't all work, but I think a lot of them have a great chance to work. Uh, there are now actually about 700 startup accelerators in the world. So we track that. Uh, in fact, there's like 100 in Canada, which blows me away. Um, Canada's really into it, so <laughs> it's cool. Um, and you know, it's, it's really been great to sort of allow people to learn from what we've learned. And we tend to be very, very open about it and view it as you know, one big network. And I think that's what you guys have figured out here in this region, even though there's different cities. Who, who by the way, is from Des Moines? Nice. Uh, Lincoln. Come on, outer. Omaha. KC. KC. Who am I missing? Tell me. I don't even know. Bellevue. Bellevue. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, you know what I just noticed is you guys are kind of sitting together, but not totally. So that's cool. So you do have this nice uh, mixture in the community and sort of um, we had a lot of conversations today about how that worked and you know, how much cooperation there was versus competition. So it's awesome to see people working together to really try to rise you know, everyone in the region. So I definitely feel that here. Um, what I want to talk about today is, is all around the world. Um, and, and I think this is one of those places. Uh, Silicon Valley is being challenged. Um, there are new communities that are rising up with awesome companies in them, like the ones that we're hearing about tonight that you guys all know. Um, and I, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, a couple things. I, I think the communities that are rising are figuring out how to solve a couple of fundamental problems. Uh, one is the sort of experience or expertise gap, and the other is a funding gap. And I'm going to talk a little bit about those tonight. Um, but first, I'll give you a little, a little puzzle uh, or something to think about. How is it that Boulder, Colorado, which is a town of 100,000 people, um, two-hour flight from the valley, uh, 100,000 people, a little college town. How is it that an accelerator that funds 10 companies a year starting in 2007 called Techstars actually has a higher average funding rate per company than a valley program like Y Combinator? How is that possible? There's not that much capital there. There's a lot of capital in the valley. So that's the riddle. And the question is, how do we figure that out? How do we make that happen? It's not all about the capital, but I think that's one of the gaps that exist. Uh, the other trick is that what Techstars did is it filled an expertise gap. It, it drew more people to mentor in the community. So, so that's the question. 
And I think, you know, you heard that maybe it could be a model for other communities. And as I travel around the world and learn about this stuff and talk about it and see these communities rising, um, that's something that people want to understand. So I'll share a little bit of what we've learned. Um, you know, Techstars, I mentioned the five communities we're in. Uh, we're very deliberately not in Silicon Valley. Uh, we think it's a great uh, community there. Obviously, it's the place in the world where a lot of this amazing stuff gets created. There's absolutely no sort of negative intention when I say that, but you know, prices there for investors are a lot higher. Competition for employees is crazy. Uh, poster companies and venture firms run rampant. Uh, aqua hires are like the new black, you know, a, a way to get out and save face. And I think there's been a lot of crazy incentives that have been created there. And I think communities like this are going to produce the next really interesting companies. You're already seeing it uh, in Chicago. You have companies like Groupon. You know, we're seeing some of the great companies here. It's not all happening in the Valley. And I think that's kind of bullshit. And I just wanted to mention it. That's all. <laughs> So all that will come back on the Valley again, uh, like we've seen before. I think these new places, um, you know, we uh, shut up and execute. I think that's what we do. We just build great companies, and we don't need to run around and talk about it all over the country all the time. We, we, we are executors, and I see that here with a lot of the companies that I've heard of. I just love the products, and I love what you guys are doing. I see the execution. It's awesome. Uh, so these communities are, are what I care about. And, you know, we're the underdogs, and I think we're going to kick some ass pretty soon if we're not already. Um, so, you know, the, the fact is, is, is getting pretty obvious, I think. There are going to be 10, 15, 20, maybe more startup communities in the world that matter and that really emerge to do great things. Um, one thing I would say, uh, you know, I, I love the Silicon Prairie news. I love the, the whole Silicon Prairie, st you know, award shows. is awesome. But, you know, it's 2012, like, with Silicon, like, who cares? Uh, there's, like, Silicon Beach and Silicon Flatirons and Boulder and Silicon Hill and Silicon whatever. I think, you know, the key is, like, we're not trying to be Silicon Valley and Boulder, and I don't think you guys should be either. I think you have something very special here that's unique, um, that has its own special merits, and I think you need to focus on that. So um, I think, you know... You guys have something awesome, and it should be your own identity. Don't, I don't think everybody in the country should be trying to say, we're going to be the next Silicon Valley. Uh, be the next Omaha and surprise some people. Right? That's what I think you should do. So how do you do it? Um, I want to share a little bit about what we've learned. So back to those two areas, the expertise cap, uh, gap and the capital gap. Um, I think with the expertise gap, you see communities that have those natural disadvantages where they don't necessarily have that many people that have you know, done internet marketing or that many developers, they, they take really creative paths. Techstars is one example of that. By gathering all of the people that matter in one community that are excellent mentors, you attract more mentors to that group from out of state, from elsewhere in the country. That's one of the things Techstars did, is it started to show the world that there was a way to engage with our community. It was this very broad and deep engagement, not a cocktail party or an award show like this, but something that lasted three months. Right? And the mentors could come in from elsewhere, see what was happening in the community. The investors could come in. There was a thing to engage with. And that's a secret that we figured out. So one challenge would be, how do you do that? How do you create these meaningful things that engage across the community that allow people from elsewhere in the country to come and experience the coolness here? Um, this is a good example. I, I was able to come in. But it's not something that's going to engage across everyone from a longer period of time. So I'm sure you have things like that. But that's a trick we figured out with Techstars. Um, in the capital gap, same, same thing. I mean, there were angel investors that we just pushed when we started Techstars. They could do it, and we said, you got to do it. That's how you build the community. I've met some people that are doing that here. They're putting their money uh, into these companies, giving back from exits they've had. That's what builds an entrepreneurial community. It's so important. And so if each of you, once you have your exits, commits to invest, say, 5% of that back into startups in the community, you'll get a build here that's really phenomenal. Um, so to those that are doing it, uh, you're, you're helping these companies get off the ground. You're part of the engine that makes it work. So figuring out ways to do those two things really matter. Um, you guys haven't stood up enough tonight, so I'm going to make you do it again. Um, I want to talk about leaders of startup communities. Um, they're really important, and I want to make a couple of points about it by forcing you guys to stand up. So if you love it here, wherever here is for you, one of those cities, 
Bellevue included. Um, stand up, but only if you love it here. All right, so, so most people, please keep standing up. If you sit down, then you don't love it here, okay? So it's cool to sit down, but you're saying, I don't love it here. All right, now, if you don't think you're gonna be here in 20 years, if you're pretty sure you won't be, sit down. 20 years, that's the ask. You're gonna be here in 20 years? Assuming, you know, you survive in general. I'm just saying, okay, stay standing, ready? All right, now, if you're not an entrepreneur, could you also just sit down? Just sit down, if you're, if you're not an active entrepreneur, everybody else stay standing. You see how this works? It's a lot of people, that is awesome. If you don't really wanna be a leader of the entrepreneurial community in this area, could you just also sit down? Okay, everybody look around. The people that are standing are the leaders of this entrepreneurial community. Thank you, you can sit. I feel like it's like a congregation. Ah, hallelujah. Uh, there's a lot of you, that is awesome. There's people that wanna be here 20 years, they're entrepreneurs, they wanna be leaders, they love it here, that's what it takes. Um, if you're not sure you're gonna be here, you can't be a leader. If you're not an entrepreneur, you can't be a leader. That's what I want you to notice. You can feed the system. So service providers, investors like myself, uh, we are feeders into the system. And this is a concept that, that Brad Feld, who's my co-founder at Techstars, talks about in his new book called Startup Communities. Um, so it's really, really important that the people that were standing take those leadership positions. Now, don't elect a president or anything like that. There is no president of the startup community. Uh, but let them lead, get behind them, follow them, right? Everybody else feed into the system. That's the key to build this community long term. Okay, so entrepreneur-led, leaders and feeders, and by Brad Feld's book. I have to plug it, he's a friend of mine. Startup communities on pre-sale on Amazon. <laughs> so for you guys that were standing at the end there, uh, think about some of these things. Quality over quantity. Uh, when you think about tech stars, we fund 10 companies at a time, we do it in cities that we think are awesome. Uh, we're not funding a million startups at a time, we're focusing on 10 that are like family. Uh, everything you do, take a quality approach to it. Just like these companies you're seeing, they're building incredible quality things. It's not about how much they build, it's about how awesome their thing is. So as you create events, as you create things to engage with, focus on quality and not quantity. Second, engage the whole stack, right? You have to get everybody involved in things that matter in the community. It's harder, you guys have geography between you, but I can tell you like to work together. Um, you have to figure out ways that meaningfully engage service providers, venture capitalists, angel investors, experienced entrepreneurs, first time entrepreneurs, in things that are very meaty and interesting to do, because that's what creates that community and cross pollination. Like I said, these things are nice and awesome, but there's nothing to do around it except network and you know, accept awards. So you need meatier things. Um, focus on neighborhoods. Uh, this is one of the interesting things in, in the conversation I had earlier today over at, at Dundee. Uh, you have multiple neighborhoods and most great startup communities, if you think about New York City, uh, really startups there are in a couple places. They're in Union Square um, and they're in Brooklyn. If you think about LA, uh, where are the startups? Kind of in Santa Monica, right? So there's pockets of activity that are very neighborhoody. And I think each of these communities has to have those neighborhoods that develop and really the startups hang out in. It's great that they have those relationships, but if you focus as leaders on your neighborhood, you can make a big difference. You have to figure out how to attract fresh meat, you guys that are leaders, into the community. Uh, I'm not talking about filet mignon, I'm talking about people that want to come here and be here. I heard earlier today in some comments that a lot of people uh, that are in this community have just been here a long time. There's not a lot of inbound flow. I don't know if that's right or not, but that's what I heard. So some of you that are leaders can figure out how to attract more people to this community that can impact the startup ecosystem, like developers, like experienced executives from somewhere else, like the Valley or New York, and get them here and get them engaged in this community. 
You need visible entry points. So if you're one of those leaders, figure out if somebody wants to come and visit here, how do they do it? How do they engage? I was talking to somebody that visited Boulder, and they said they were blown away by the speed at which they got connected to the community when they sent one email that got introduced to 15 leaders of the community uh, very easily. They got offered a couch. They were told, hey, you can hang out and sleep here. It's like Airbnb, but it's free. Um, so create those visible entry points. Make it easy for people to engage. And finally, if you're a leader, think about the idea of inclusiveness. Okay? Anybody who wants to be a part of the community, you have to let them be a part of the community. Okay? It's really important not to be cliquish, not to be like ends versus outs. If people want to engage, you have to figure out how to let them. So those are some things for you guys that were leaders that were standing at the end to think of about. Uh, and finally, so in summary, I guess I give you the challenge. Uh, Omaha, Silicon Prairie in general, increase your expertise, figure out how to fund these startups before they get the hell out of here, especially at the early stage. So really encourage that angel investing scene. Um, think long term, be inclusive, and it's all about quality. There is no next Silicon Valley. There's only the better Omaha, the better Kansas City, the better Des Moines, the better Boulder, wherever it is. And for those of you watching on the live stream, Watch out for this community because it just might fucking surprise you. Thank you, David. Um, the winners, all the winners of tonight will receive a copy of David's book, Do More Faster. Can we give another round of David? I think it was a fantastic talk. Now we're going to jump right into our last six awards. Now to present the award for B2B Startup of the Year is David Brown of the Greater Omaha Chamber of Commerce and Matt Watson of Stackify. I want to start out by thanking Mark Hazelbrook for claiming to be the oldest person in the room. <laughs> that way I don't have to admit to it, so thank you, Mark, and congratulations. I'm the only one that's going to use cheaters up here, though, so I'm not so sure. These four finalists for B2B uh, Startup of the Year have clients that range from city halls to NFL teams. But whether their users were analyzing a new city product, project or the most recent game film, these startups all took pages out of the right playbook, as each saw a notable growth this past year. And here are the finalists. Huddle. The maker of online video analysis and coaching tools, the startup acquired its two largest competitors in the high school football market and following its motto to dominate. It added NHL and NBA teams to its roster and gave new clients new tools, releasing an iPhone and Android app. LockPath, the maker of compliance and risk management software. In September, LockPath released the second version of its flagship product, the Keylight platform. In April, it was one of 10 companies to present at the MIT Sloan CIO Symposium's Innovation Showcase. And over the past year, the company quadrupled revenues, made key hires, and added strategic partners. MindMixer, an online platform for community engagement. The startup topped off its past year when it learned it had been accepted into Code for America's inaugural accelerator. Originally launched to serve cities, it added school districts, universities, and politicians, growing its client list to 200 and closing a $1.9 million seed round in the process. And finally, Rarewire, the maker of App Creation Studio. The startup made itself known in the mobile app universe in July 2011 as the maker of the Atlantic's iPad app, which went on to win two Appy Awards. Rarewire has since turned the magic behind its app making over to its clients with the private beta release of its app creation studio. And the analog goes to Huddle.
accepting the award on behalf of Huddle is Kyle Murphy, Matt Mueller, and... Murphy's hiding out there somewhere. Uh, oh, he's right here. He's sneaking. <laughs> there he is. Hey, well, we just want to thank everyone. I think uh, it's, it's awesome to win a company award, and I think we have to start this off by thanking everyone on the Huddle team. There's a handful of people here, and there's about 25 people back in the office still supporting coaches. This is our busiest weekend of the year, so hat tip to everyone who's, uh, who's helping us dominate this weekend back at the office. Uh, you know, Huddle's, uh, we've grown a lot. I want to thank Silicon Prairie for tweeting about us and writing about us when it was just Sarah and I tweeting all the time. Uh, we were nobodies. And... Uh, We've grown a lot since then, and, and uh, we just want to thank everyone for all the help they've been in helping us grow over the, the past few years. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Now to present the award for Consumer Startup of the Year is Maria Claire Marcusen of Simply Retail and Skip Quint of Bellevue University, one of tonight's premier sponsors. category's finalists are gaming companies, but the four companies' performances over the past year suggest none of them were playing around. Here are the finalists. Bloom. The Social Beauty Network launched nationally in August, and less than six months later, it was the, on the verge of surpassing the 100,000 member mark. In April, Bloom closed a $5.4 million Series A round led by the Capricorn Investment Group. At the close of 2011, the startup made InStyle's best of the web list. Douala. This payment startup passed $1 million in transactions per day, released features at meetups that packed bars in Des Moines, and released a $5 million Series B round led by Union Square Ventures that included participation from Iowa native Aston Kutcher. Fast Company named the startup to its list of the world's most innovative companies. Hatchings. The game described as the world's largest Easter egg hunt released a private beta of its overhauled second version, Hatchlings 2. And by the end of June, it was preparing for its July 1 public release. The new version moved the game off Facebook's website, where it attracted 3.5 million users to its own domain. Skyview Entertainment. The startup behind Battle Bears opened the past year by announcing a new milestone, 11 million downloads, and releasing a new game. In December, it released another new title, multiplayer game Battle Bears Royale, and by the end of June, its download climbed to 17 million. The startup was named one of the pocketgamer.biz's top 50 developers. And the analog goes to? Dwala. Accepting the award on behalf of Dwala is Dwala. Thank you guys. I mean, Des Moines gave us our first user base. Um, Des Moines gave us our first investors, which helped us figure out how to do what we do legally. Um, Silicon Prairie News was the first person to ever report on us. 
um, that basically gave us credibility that got us our first meetings. Um, the people in the room are the people that built what Dwala is. So thank you. Now to present the award for Ambassador of the Year is Wayne Arnold of Bano and our, own, our very own Jeff Wood, Silicon Premiers. Though these four finalists all reside outside the region today, they all have strong ties to Silicon Prairie. They've all lived here, and they all don't, haven't forgotten that as they moved on in their life. Here are the finalists. First is Ashton Kutcher. Not only, not only getting me 200 emails in one day, but uh, this high-profile actor and investor returned to his home state of Iowa in April to announce his investment in Douala. Though for just one day, Kutcher's star power shed a spotlight on the Silicon Prairie. Raul Gupta. <laughs> this native Californian spent the last eight years in Omaha until moving back to his home state in April. Before leaving, however, he co-founded a web development firm whose co-founder still remains here. The company carries the slogan, a Silicon Prairie company with Silicon Valley roots. In June, he organized a Silicon Prairie meetup for those in San Francisco. Nick Seguin, <laughs> after serving as the Kauffman Foundation's Manager of Entrepreneurship for 18 months, Nick Seguin returned to Ohio in May to work at a web, ooh, <laughs> at the web development firm he co-founded. Since leaving Kansas City and during travels with the Kauffman Foundation, Seguin has stayed connected to the region, boasting its startup community when given the opportunity. And finally, Ben Silberman. This Iowa native became one of the most notable names in tech this past year as the startup he co-founded, Pinterest, exploded. With the rise came awareness of his and his startup's roots. On stage at our Think Iowa event in October, Silberman said Iowa, given its population and size, is disproportionately rec represented on Pinterest, a fact that has appeared in other stories about the platform. And the analog goes to? <laughs> Raul Gupta. So first of all, uh, thanks to the vision of, of Silicon Prairie News three years ago, Danny, Jeff, and Dusty were starting all this because I wouldn't be holding a golden prairie dog otherwise. Um, in case my family is watching in San Francisco on the live stream, hi Tatiana, hi Sean, love you Sarah. Um, so uh, three thank yous. First of all, uh, thanks to Ashton Kutcher for not tweeting about this. <laughs> Uh, thanks to the rest of you for responding to my blitzkrieg of tweets. Uh, and finally, really, in terms of being an ambassador, there, there would be nothing to talk about if it wasn't for the work that all of you were doing. I mean, I... <laughs> so these are my ambassador duties. So where have you been? I've been in Omaha. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, really. And then I explain all the great things that are going on. It's really fantastic. Um, so if you guys weren't doing the work that you're doing, I wouldn't be able to be out there representing you. So thank you. Now to present the award for Community Champion of the Year is our very own Jeff Slobotsky, accompanied by Je uh, Andy Stoll.
Each of the four finalists play a different part in the region's startup community, but through their unique roles, all have had a major hand in the growth of the Silicon Prairie. Here are this year's finalists. Joni Cobb, President and CEO of Pipeline. In her role, Cobb works with nearly 60 entrepreneurs. In 2012, she led the expansion of Pipeline into Nebraska, bringing the organization to serve three of the four Silicon Prairie states, Kansas, Missouri, and Nebraska. Thad Langford, entrepreneur in residence at Open Air Equity Partners, formerly the president and CEO of Zave Networks, Langford joined Open Air Partners following Google's acquisition of Zave. In the past year, he's become an active investor in and an advisor to Kansas City startups. Community involvement includes serving on the Kansas City Chamber's Big Five Steering Committee for Entrepreneurship and participating on a Tech Week Chicago panel titled Stories from the Silicon Prairie. Christian Renault. <laughs> co-founder, principal, and mentor in residence at Startup City Des Moines. Renault is also the co-founder and CEO of his own startup, Presentio, and serves an as an advisor to more than 25 startups. In December, he co-founded Startup Iowa, and in June, he co-founded Plains Angels, Renault is a Technology Association of Iowa board member and was the keynote speaker at Iowa's I to, I to Iowa event and the Nebraska Summit on, on, on Entrepreneurship. And lastly, Dusty Reynolds, new father, by the way, Director of Entrepreneurship and Innovation at the Greater Omaha Chamber of Commerce. In his role, he provides connections and resources for local entrepreneurs and collaborates with university officials funders, entrepreneurs, and others to build an entrepreneurial ecosystem. He also organizes the monthly Cornstalks event and established the quarterly event, Common Ground. And the analog goes to Dusty Reynolds. This is another one of those cases where something came up and that was uh, a baby was born. So uh, Dusty Reynolds' wife uh, gave birth to their first child, uh, I think earlier this week. So he gave me a call and asked if he did a, ex get the award, Jim Linder will accept. Well, I'm shorter than Dusty, older than Dusty, and he's thinner than I am. But uh, I am fortunate that uh, I know Dusty. I enjoy working with him uh, at the Nebraska Chamber, uh, helping him uh, integrate with the community and work with the University of Nebraska. Uh, the region is fortunate to have Dusty as a representative in the role that he's in. The Omaha Chamber, David Brown and his colleagues, were wise to engage Dusty uh, to fill this important role of helping grow the entrepreneurial ecosystem here in uh, the region. Uh, Dusty did provide me with some remarks that he wanted to share with you, so I will read those from Dusty Reynolds. <laughs> Dusty, I hope you're watching this live streaming. The prairie is full of hardworking, honest, high integrity folk who care so much more than just themselves. I'm consistently reminded of how awesome we have it here in the Midwest. To know that I get to work with all of you folks is an absolute blessing. Thank you so much for letting me work alongside of you as we continue to build something extra special here. He continues, while the Silicon Prairie Awards are much more legitimate than those offered on the office, I can now relate to Dwight Schulte when he said, I can no longer say that I'm always the Padawan, never the Jedi. Dusty, congratulations. Uh, good luck with your new family, and congratulations from everyone here at Silicon Prairie. We're in the home stretch of our awards. Two awards left, the second to last. The new startup of the year will be presented by Macy Cook of RecBob and Ryan Downs of Proxybid.
This category recognizes the new kid on the block that quickly made a name for itself and for good reason. Each of these startups launched its public beta between July 2011 and June 2012. And here are the finalists. Front Flip. This customer engagement platform launched in Kansas City in November and then nationwide in April and has since attracted a client list that includes McDonald's, Pizza Hut, Arby's, and Boston Market. With more than 200,000 registered users, Fluntflip can be found in more than 700 locations. Goodsmiths. This online marketplace for makers launched in early April and by the end of June had signed up more than 1,300 stores that listed more than $800,000 in total inventory. June was also marked by a key hire for the startup as Goodsmiths hired an 18-year Meredith veteran to join its team. Clink Mobile. This mobile-based minutes and money transfer startup launched in January and began marketing its platform to users in Afghanistan in February. One month later, the startup's founder was selected to participate in Think Big Partners Silicon Valley Bank Seed Showcase. Sporting Innovations. This sports stadium technology startup launched in October 2011 is a creator of the Fan360 application. In May, the Stadium Business Summit awarded the app its Product Innovation Award, which recognizes a product that has uniquely transformed and improved the way stadiums, arenas, and sports venues do business. And the analog goes to... Goodsmiths. Accepting the analog on behalf of Goodsmiths here is James Eliason, accompanied by his team. Levi's coming last because I told him he was going to do this speech. Uh, first of all, um, thank you, SPN. I mean, uh, it's it's an incredible honor for us to to accept this award. Um, I woke up one morning about eight months ago uh, when we were doing client work and. I came into work and at the time it was Brandon, Levi, and myself, and I said, we're done doing this. Uh, we are going to focus 100% on Goodsmiths, and, and ever since we did that, uh, we've gone uphill um, as far as traffic, sales, the whole nine yards. And to be quite frankly, this entire team that's come over tonight uh, from Des Moines, deserves a lot of credit, so I just, it will take two seconds, but please clap for the entire team of Goodsmiths. We, uh, we certainly have a lot of things on our plate um, as we go forward, and we certainly, we appreciate um, all, this, all the support from, from the prairie that we get. And uh, we're gonna take a little analog home with us on the bus back to Des Moines. I'm sure we're gonna have a good time tonight. So uh, thank you all so much, thank you. Now for the final category of the night, one that includes nothing but familiar faces is Startup of the Year, presented by Brittany Massio and Dusty Davidson of Silicon Prairie News. I really apologize for my comment about standing up at the beginning of this night. Uh, although it's fun, because I got to experience it, right? I didn't get that the first time. Uh, we get the pleasure Miss Brittany and I, of uh, presenting the final award of the night, uh, probably my favorite, uh, Startup of the Year. Uh, this category recognizes a new kid on the block that quickly made a name for itself and for good reason. The finalists are Dwala. Uh, this payment startup earned media attention nonstop this past year 
It kicked, off, it kicked it off by suppressing $1 million in transactions per day, went on to release three features and products, and in February closed a $5 million Series B round led by Union Square Ventures. Huddle. Dominate. Um, <laughs> this maker of online video analysts and coaching tools stood out in a year when a, wave of fe when a wave of feature stories on sports technologies hit newspapers nationwide. Coaches going high tech with film study, oh, with film study, one South Carolina outlet wrote. Huddle's past year included acquisitions in two, in two largest competitors in high school football market and the expansion of its roster to include NHL and NBA teams. Mind Mixer. This online platform for community engagement took part in the rise of the Gov 2.0 trend and by year's end earned a spot in the inaugural Code for America Accelerator. It brings to the program a client list of more than 200, including newly launched verticals, school districts, universities, and politicians. In April, it closed a $1.9 million seed round. Rarewire. This mobile app started uh, this mobile app startup put the power of making mobile apps into more hands when it released beta versions of its app creation studio this past year. Its app making resume is an impressive one, including the Atlantic iPad app, which went which went on to win two app epi, er, yeah, <laughs> appy awards. And the analog goes to. Voila, hello. Real quick, Huddle, where are you guys? I think that I, I really appreciate this honor. Again, it's you guys in the room that built our company, and there's people that aren't up here who have contributed just as much as a lot of us on stage. Um, and I know just like huddle, like just, I'm a big fan, man. Um, thank you guys and thank you everybody for your support. This means a lot in Silicon Prairie News. Just if you weren't here, we probably wouldn't be. We would have been one of the companies that would have left trying to stay alive. So Silicon Prairie News, thank you so much. And, and for clarification, uh, we had the wrong description on that award. It's not the new kid. They've been around for a while. But it's the top startup that everyone was talking about, the one that marked progress towards solidifying its success, having an all-around banner year. Could be said for all of them, as each of our final category finalists were a part of other awards. That was my bad, actually, Dusty. I put that in the script. <laughs> well, that does it, folks. That concludes the first Silicon Prairie Awards. I think we should give ourselves another round of applause. I mean, really, and really, the year's just begun. These awards recognize things that took place through the end of July, or through, excuse me, through the end of June. I mean, here we are in August, already two months into this, so we've already seen milestones that'll be taken into effect when we get back together. Next year we hold the awards, we're going to have it in Des Moines. This is going to be a rotating event. So it goes Omaha, Des Moines, and down in 2014, we'll see you in Kansas City. And in October, another event happening in Des Moines, actually, Think Iowa. So if uh, you're looking for, you know, it's, it's similar to what we've done last year, and we did Think Iowa last year. We've done Big Omaha now for four years, happening in Des Moines. Check it out at thinkiowa.com. And now I want you guys all to join me 
in the back there for our closing party, presented by one of our sponsors, Huddle. And that's it, folks. That wraps up the first Silicon Prairie Awards.